Let's talk about how to train and collaborate with your virtual assistants to grow your real estate business. If we haven't met before, welcome to my channel. I'm Charlie Cameron, a realtor, investor, and team leader at eXp Realty with the goal of helping thousands of real estate agents create massive financial success, take control of their businesses, and create a high quality freedom lifestyle through real estate. Now, if you're wondering why we're talking about training and collaborating with your virtual assistants before talking about hiring them, it's because you haven't watched parts one through three. Make sure to go back and do that. We talk all about why you need virtual assistants in your business, what they can do, costs associated with that, how I go about hiring using onlinejobs.ph, and then how to efficiently interview and choose the right virtual assistant for your task or tasks. So with that, let's jump into how I train and how I collaborate with my virtual assistants. Okay, here's some tools that I use to collaborate and train my virtual assistants. I will say that I think most people can make use of most of these tools. You're going to find that whatever your tasks are, you may have other things you need to pull in or a different variation of some of these tools. But essentially, you're going to need what most of these tools do for your business to help collaborate with your virtual assistants. So here's some of the tools I use. I use Loom like it's going out of style. That's a screen share video where I can walk through tasks. So this is the absolute best way to train and show your virtual assistants what you want them to do. If you walk through you doing the task, if it's something that's the same exact same thing every time, create one video of you doing it, boom, off to the races. You don't need to write anything else. They'll review it. They'll take their own notes. They'll execute forever. Now, if it's something that's variable every time, like, ooh, in this situation, we might want to do this. In this situation, we might want to do this. Then I would recommend creating a handful of videos every time you do the task the first few times and then turn it over to them. Let them try and do it, especially if there's an opportunity to do kind of a draft thing. Let them try and do it and then give feedback along the way. So very, very often do I try a task with a VA. Almost every time we're going to have to give feedback and we're going to have to kind of improve on that process. And the next time we might have to approve it again and maybe a third time. But after about that amount, they usually get whatever the task is. Um, and you probably will only need to make small minor tweaks as you want to see differences in the future. Loom is absolutely a great way to do that. You can take short videos on Loom. I think less than five minutes. Maybe it's 10 for free. But I tend to have a lot of content I put out on there. This video is being taken by Loom right now. Um, <clears throat> it's a super useful tool. So I really recommend everybody get that one. But awesome for training your virtual assistants. Um, let me show you what that looks like real quick. So here's, here's what Loom looks like. This is literally a video I made yesterday showing, giving my virtual assistant some feedback on a blog post she did. She did a great job, but I wanted to see some changes and some improvements, so I created a six-minute video kind of walking through what those were. Trust me, it's a much better use of your time, typically on tasks like this, to show someone how to do it better, and then they can go back and improve on it rather than you doing it, because they're not going to learn from that, right? So definitely, definitely consider that. The next tool is Slack. You only really need Slack if you have multiple people collaborating. So if you have multiple virtual assistants in you and they work together, or if you have multiple people on your team that collaborate and work with that one virtual assistant, then you probably need something like Slack, which is free for a certain number of users and they're, they're changing the membership structure. So it may be paid for everybody soon, but, but it is a very useful tool, especially if you have a team of more than just a handful of people. Otherwise, you can kind of go back and forth on email. If they work the same hours as you, you can leave Zoom on if you really want to talk to them. I know some people who have some massive teams and have Zoom open where they can task a virtual assistant on the fly. That's not really what I need virtual assistants for, so I don't do that. I may ask for meetings on occasion or once a week or a set time. So that that's a... Um, it, there's lots of different ways to interact with your virtual assistant. Some of them prefer just a, a chat like... Google chat through your Gmail browser. So uh, multiple ways to do that. Slack really is my preferred way because I can always go back and reference what I put there and search. It's just a little bit easier than trying to filter through my inbox. And I can have multiple different tabs. So here's what it kind of looks like. Got different tabs for different activities. That VA may help with some. Other VAs helping with others. I can do direct messaging, all that kind of stuff. So I find that to be a very useful tool. And then there's Trello. Trello, uh, I finally gotten be behind Trello. It's kind of a board where you can post tasks. Let me just show it to you right now. So this is kind of what it looks like. I can task, hey, 
um, not started, I would put new tasks here. She'll move them to in progress as she starts working them. Um, she'll move it here when it's time for my review. If I approve it and it's good, I move it to done. If I need revisions, I put it here and I pr provide like a loom feedback video of what revisions I want to see and why. The and why is very important so they understand to do that or not do that thing in the future. Okay. So Trello is pretty useful for that. It's free for a certain number of users. So, so I'm a fan of that as well. Um, Slab. Not a lot of people know about this tool, but I've fallen in love with it very quickly. Let me just show this to you. It's kind of like a wiki builder, but totally customizable for your own things. You can have different topic areas. You can have different accesses to different topic areas. You can tag people. You can edit things. You can embed stuff. Very useful. It integrates with, with Slack and Trello and all the other tools and Loom if you want. Um, so what I use it for is I use it to log things that are complete, but I also use it to show all the tasks that a VA should be doing and how to do it. So here's one example, you know, adding YouTube video subtitles and chapters. I have a video showing how to do exactly that. They can kind of see, um, where's the Trello board for those assignments, right? Where do I go to accomplish this? Well, I go to YouTube and I, uh, you know, they have access to my account. And then I also go through and I typically write down step-by-step -step instructions, especially if there's something kind of important that may not be captured in the video. I'll go through here and, and put all that down here. So... Um, this is a really, really good way for them to stay organized and know, okay, if I need to go back and reference a video to know how to do that task, let me go here, right? And if you did give some feedback videos too, I would add those to this and just say, hey, feedback videos so they can go back and reference those too. And then you can create a post for every single one of these. You can categorize these like this is a YouTube one. I'll put it in a YouTube topic area so they can look in the YouTube area and see all the tasks there. And then I'll just put a post right under them that says, hey, here's all your tasks and the frequency of those tasks. And then I link right to them. So it's a very, very useful tool. It's free for under 10 users, I think. So um, I recommend everybody use this. And then LastPass. LastPass is great if you have passwords you don't want to share. Um, I have a tendency to, for a lot of the tools that my virtual assistants are using, it's not that important to me that... Um, I not give out my password because um, they won't be able to do much with it anyway, right? They, they, they can do the thing they need to do and that's about it. It's usually I can change kind of account levels. But if you want to share passwords and not actually share the password, you use LastPass. LastPass is a paid tool. Of course, you can charge it as you know, all these paid tools you can are, you know, um, are expenses, okay, against your business, non-taxable, right? So make sure you're doing that. But LastPass allows you to, with a browser extension, you can add teammates. They can go and you can give them the exact accesses to which accounts. Um, you don't have to give them access to all the accounts you have in LastPass. You can just pick and choose which ones are assigned to which people. And then they can use that um, tool. They go to the site that you ask them to. It's going to auto-populate the username and password. Boom, they're in. Very great tool. Clockify is a free smartphone app where they can track their time. Also great, especially if you're, they're new, highly recommend you track their hours. After a while, you may get the kind of sense of how much work they're outputting and you may not need to track them anymore. If you hire them full time, um, you may not need it. So that's kind of cool. And then paying, you're gonna have to pay them, right? And, and B, please, please, please pay them on time. It's very important to me anyway, personally, that these people that are working for you and you're helping them put food on the table, that you pay them, um, on time, okay? And we can work out how often that is ahead of time. I try to do it every two weeks. Some would like every week, which is okay with me. But I use PayPal or Wise. Wise is a little clunky to get figured out, but it is cheaper on their end in terms of fees, especially in the Philippines. So now that I've talked about the tools I use, I really think everyone can get a lot from these. Let me talk about how I train virtual assistants. This has come from experience over time, hiring multiple virtual assistants across multiple different skill sets. This works for all of them. So add them to all the accounts you need, duh. But you know, if you don't add them to the accounts you need, they can't actually do the tasks. So don't forget about that. Now prepare a training video and a step-by-step -step list for every single task. Keep in mind, if you don't do this before you hire them, you're either gonna be paying them not to do nothing because they don't have anything they know how to do yet, or 
you're not going to be paying them because they're not doing any tasks and they're going to need income. So they're going to look elsewhere for other work. So all that work you did for the pro account and getting them hired and interviewing and bringing them on board your team, if you don't immediately have stuff for them to do so they can put food on the table, they might walk, right? They've got to do what's best for them and their family. So they're going to go find other work. So highly recommend you prepare. You don't have to have everything built out for them. Like your, your big vision, if they're a full-time VA is these 20 tasks every single week. You don't have to have all that. You can have just five tasks because frankly, they're going to need just a few tasks to start with. That's bullet three there before you pile on more. So what I recommend you do is at least build out a sum. And then as they learn those, you can start building out the others. Now let them start with a few different tasks. Don't pile on 20 different tasks. You can pile on more like tasks. If you have a bunch of similar ones, that's fine. But start with a few and then let them try that task and provide feedback to them. Okay. Some of them are virtual assistants might be shy asking for feedback. Some may not, but give it to them whether they ask for it or not, because it's not going to be perfect the first time. They don't know how you work and how you want it. So provide that feedback and then just repeat that process until they get it. If it's going on forever, okay, you might want to consider one of those backup virtual assistants. But um, for the most part, they all get it. Just keep repeating that process a few times. I guarantee it's probably not more than three, and then they'll kind of have a, a great grasp on it. You might need to provide feedback depending on how complex each task is. For some, some tasks, like uh, whatever it may be, video editing, there's almost always feedback in an editing edit that has to happen. Okay, that's just part of that process. But um, provide that feedback, repeat till they get it. This is not an instant success recipe. You don't just hire a virtual assistant on all of a sudden 40 more hours of work are getting done. They got to be trained to do it. it. Takes time to do, but it will be worth it. Be patient and remember, perfect is the enemy of good enough. So that also means, hey, you know, maybe that virtual assistant can never do it 100% the way you can do it but they can do it 90% of the way and they can do it for 40 more hours a week than you can. Okay. That's probably good enough. Most of the time have periodic zoom check-ins. We didn't talk about zoom. You can get it for free for 40 minutes at a time. That's plenty. Um, have some periodic zoom check-ins where you check and see how they're doing. How can you help them? So that's that last bullet. Don't forget to ask them what they need for you. Again, they might be shy. They may not know how to ask for it, or they might be embarrassed to ask for it even there's no need for that and make them feel comfortable. Say, Hey, anytime you need anything, or you feel like, you know, you're falling behind or you don't understand a task, just ask and we'll get that solved. And then this one I really, really, really love. And some of my virtual assistants have come up with it on their own, which is so cool, but ask for daily or weekly reporting. That way you have an idea of what they accomplished that day, what needs they have. You can come up with a format, say, Hey, what tasks did you do today? What couldn't you do? What were your barriers to success? What could we improve together as a team? That's great feedback. You, you will be surprised how much better you get at this process and with working with them. And then have a way to track their output, right? Is it they got, you know, four videos edited this today or whatever that metric may be, have a way to kind of track that over time. So if you enjoyed this series, it would be awesome if you like this video and subscribe. We're going to have a lot more tips and tricks for realtors. We're going to talk a lot more about lead generation and building a massive real estate business. And on that note, if you would like to learn how to use more leverage in your real estate business to create more time, or you'd like to learn how to create additional streams of income and create financial freedom in your real estate business, consider joining the Lion League team at eXp Realty for free. Schedule a discovery call at the link below. We'll gladly show you the model as well as the dozens of exclusive benefits and resources our team provides to create freedom in your business. I'll see you next time.